Where do you go for live music? For my live music and live entertainment, I go to the Renaissance Art Space. Tanisha, the wordsmith. Albany, New York is in the house. Yeah, yeah. On the way here, stuck in traffic, is John Chance Acevedo, Joseph Son Hernandez, and Kid Garcia. So we're going to have some fun tonight when they get here, but we have a number of other performers who will be rocking until they do. Is that cool with y'all? Yeah. All right, with that, I'm going to kick off a piece. Y'all got to bear with me because I can't sing. So. <laughs> But doing what poets do, we always throw a hooks knowing we can't sing. Right, here we go. Daddy played the drums, Mama sang the blues. Daddy played the drums, Mama sang the blues. Life's been so hard. Sometimes, and we just watch the drama as the world turns. His mama makes frequent trips to General's Hospital. Daddy goes to the barbershop to drink another beer to the chairs of the boys who always seem to enjoy a good fight. And then fright, we learn that boys could grow into the men who didn't respect the women who loved them because nobody told us otherwise. See, otherwise we would be them punks to let their women stand up to them. So we learned what daddy and all the other daddies taught us to hide our fears in the fear of the man because he controls us except, except when we at the barbershop. Love as many women as you could because life is too short and ain't nothing wrong with getting high because sometimes a man needed to be a man and hide inside himself and to smack our women when they consider speaking what grown men were thinking. So we... We became them boys in the hood and she became that woman of the night drowning sorrows and tears and prayers and praying to the creator to make this situation okay because daddy really wasn't a bad man. He just didn't realize what he was doing. So we stayed home more and more to make sure that daddy did not know what he was doing too much because we loved mama. But we began to think that mama shouldn't say nothing what daddy was thinking because then he had to do what grown men do, right? So we became the specters that existed in the shadows of the night, blending in with the sun, the wind, and the clouds. And on our good days, on our good days, it would rain in them bad days. We would just do like pop and go to the barbershop to be reassured some school. Never really mattered because them teachers be treating us like dirt because the water be turned off at home because mama couldn't pay them bills because daddy, we all know daddy. Daddy did what real men do, right? So our clothes would never be clean enough and we would never smell good enough and we got tired of being the ones that everybody picked on. So we took advantage of them street opportunities to help mama make ends meet and not get daddy mad. 
Cause them drums be beating like thunder sometimes and sleep don't master pain up here and mama sing the blues. So just be out here watching time, getting paid, waiting for someone to ask us why. Daddy played the drums and mama sang the blues. Daddy played the drums and mama sang the blues. Life's been so hard sometimes and me so I never would have knew that young brother's story if I didn't stop to ask him why he sold drugs on my street in front of my house in front of my kids and I just couldn't understand for the life of me why he would beat his girl so bad it's been four years since I've seen that young man and I can't get it out of the back of my head his father played the drums and his mama sang the blues and the rest of us just watched his life and time he passed him by. What is black? Black is beautiful. Black life is everything. Power is power is Love, power is family. Family is life. Life is worth living. Black life is ours, so preserve it. Know yourself and get tested, and get tested, and get tested. Oh, I still really love you. Love is stronger than pride. Call me a call me a call, call me a base. There's a lot of hidden dangers out there in cyberspace. Never put your personal information online. Unless you ask your parents and they say that it's fine. Before you lose. Out of 1.1 million people in the United States living with HIV or AIDS, more than 500,000 of them are black. The HIV incidence rate for black women is about 15 times as high as that of white women. At some point during their lives, one in 30 black women will be diagnosed with H I B. Know your status. Get tested. Keep it flowing, is that cool? Yeah. Next up, clap your hands, show some love, Miss Maddie Kingoria. Give it up. start off with something like it just hits y'all just to wake y'all up but I decided to start off with something you know a love letter to someone that I feel has feelings for me but in an unfortunate situation it can't be but I had to write a paper a proposal so if I could say what I have to say I want you guys to hear it all right, it's something nice, there's nothing, I'll do naughty after this one, okay? 
I always wonder how we can talk to one another after we have not seen one another in one year. Our last conversation just continued from where we always um, left off or to start on a more recent topic. We listen to our words with interest <coughs> as if we've known each other for more than a year. Looking into your eyes gives me joy because I notice they shine when you look at me. Your naughtiness shows in your face when you drope around, but it amazes me when it turns to anger. I imagine running my fingers through your hair just to make you laugh. I silently hope that you hold me in your arms so I can hear your heartbeat as you breathe. I feel so comfortable in your company. The way you show concern for me causes me to care for you in the present time and in the future. You are a determined man, which is why I admire you. You will have my support in all that you do, but yet I will question you if necessary. When we are together, we are a force of one. I've had friends walk up to me to ask how do we connect so well. I simply <clears throat> tell them that our souls know one another. The bond we have pulls back together whenever we do separate. Having teenage daughters can be nerve-wracking, but our parental skills seem pretty similar in firm. And that is okay, because life's trials and trivializations can only make us stronger as friends and a couple. As I type this, I am enjoying wonderful memories of the times we had spent together, flowing all the way through my mind. So many words I want to type that can describe this feeling that you give me. But there are some I have to let you know. I love you. I feel it, and I will always let it show. I will bask in your sunshine that exudes from you as you walk towards me. My breath will never be gone because I needed to love you. God gave me a rare opportunity to find a man like you, and I thank him for it. Your presence in my life makes it worthwhile to wake up every day. The blessings I have received since our first hello have made me a better, happier woman. My smile comes easier as I proceed throughout the day. Compliments have been given about my bounce in my step and my brighter disposition. And I say thank you. It must be love. With a chuckle and then I walk along and keep going where I gotta go. I hope it touches your heart, that it touches, as it touches mine. I look forward to ending each day side by side with you for the rest of my life, together forever. So now I ask you, will you marry me? Make me wet. Hot for your thickness. Love it. Open to you. Sweat me. Smell my desire. Feel the horniness, the horniness you bring me out in my pussy. My person. Let's complete the thing that's building. Finish raising that dial. Make some serious friction. I am the bomb, and your dick is the fuse. Light it up and let us explode on it. <laughs> on it, let us explode on it, through it, and in it. Alrighty. Bedevil me, seduce me annoyingly, ironically call me, sardonically remember. I mean, really, it's me, yummy. <laughs> All right, y'all, clap your hands. Give it up, Miss Maddie. Give it up. Right, we got a vocalist in the house. Oh, update. John Champ Acevedo is only five minutes away. So, little New York, the rest of New York will be yeah. joining us shortly. 
Next up to the mic, I want you to clap your hands, show some love, give it up for Mr. Donnie Ratchet. Thank you. I make sure I'll put it back down when I'm done. Appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> I um. I want to say happy birthday to a young lady over there, Dre. Happy birthday. Hey. I'm um, going to do a song about Earth, Wind, and Fire. It's another holiday, so I'm, I'm ready for that.
Stage. We also hosted a birthday party uh, for all Scorpion born and Scorpios in the building. Like some noise. <laughs> That's what's up. And uh, we, we do want to continue the things that are going on. My man D Moss will elaborate a little bit more later on in the show as we take it back to him. All right, y'all having a good time? That's what's up. We're going to keep it moving. Next up to the stage, y'all clap your hands, show some love, give it up, and Dre, y'all. My birthday is actually two days ago, but I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing. We celebrate the whole week. You know how we do. Uh, At least the whole month. I mean, I, I mean, you celebrate the exactly. whole month. Exactly. It's my birthday yeah. for the rest of the yeah, month. You, yeah, it's your birthday. birthday. Um, I usually do my erotic poetry. Today I got something a little different. So. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, makes me want to holler the way they do my life. Makes me wanna holler. God damn, I wanna holler. It's a shame how people these days are getting killed over a dollar. What's going on where blood is shed and there's not a tear shed behind it? Where we use and abuse each other because we are all so blinded by our own lives and wrapped up in our own petty problems that we didn't bat a lash over the soldiers who died in Bagram or over the children in Africa dying of war, hunger, and AIDS or even over those who break their backs in America and aren't getting paid, not a dime close to what they're owed as they slave away under CEOs that rob them of their dignity to say what's on their minds to say that they're being fucked left and right for fear of breaking the news that they no longer have a job that night. Makes me wonder why our brother in arms died in the sand while nobody cared over here in Freedom Land. That's what's, that's what's to be expected when you go to war. That's what happens when fighting's your chore. Makes me want to holler, four or five mass killings within a few months, yet we bitch about the new iPhone we want. People gone and never returning and nobody cares but family and friends. Man, that sucks. We forget about it and that's just the end. What about those kids who had their whole lives to live? They just went to school to die, but then again, who gives a damn? What about those people that went to unwind, who went to see a movie but met the end of their time? What about the rest of the world slowly grinding to a halt, each company each country blaming the other, saying it's their fault, that we're fucked up, that it's us you owe. I guess that's just how it is. You reap what you sow. Does anyone remember that kid from middle school that got shot? I remember his name, but I can bet you do not. How did we get so wrapped up in our Facebook drama and Twitter feeds that we forgot to look out for our fellow man's needs? What happened to just asking someone if they were okay and meaning it? And not just asking to be nosy or to start some kind of bullshit? When do we become more interested in fights on YouTube and world star hip hop, Instagram and Pinterest? When will the madness stop? What happened to calling just to show you care? What happened to caring about people outside of yourself and those right there in front of your face? How is it that we are so desensitized that we don't know how to cry, to mourn or weep? How is it that people just die and nobody cares except for a moment? And even those close to us, we forget in a short time. When did this all, all become okay? And who said that it was fine for us to go about our day and continue to be self-centered when things are happening on a much larger scale? Has our compassion been splintered into so many parts and pieces that it no longer exists? Where the hell are our heads at? Because I miss the days when gone but not forgotten actually meant one was remembered. But it seems that society as a whole has gotten colder than a day in December. Sweet Brown said it best. Ain't nobody got time for that. <clears throat> But is it really time that we lack? Or is it heart? Is it emotion? Do we even feel anymore? And that's what has me scared. Is it true that in this day and age, no one really cares?
today's world, negative distractions are everywhere. At LQ's Performing Arts Center, our mission is to build, foster, and to empower the youth in our community. Call today to enroll your child. Classes are forming now. You and Sade not kicking it no more? He walked out on me. And you know her cousin's pissed at you. See, no man is going to screw my cousin, throw her out on the ground, and leave her there to dry. I think Monica weighs you down. You even said that. I'm the fool for letting you back into my life. You should be grateful that I'm here with you. I feel like I'm second best to this chick. Did you stop praying? We have another song, she's, her name is Sierra Gamble. Clap your hands, give it up, give it up, give it up.
Give it up, give it up, give it up. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, for the outstanding poet. After party, right? I just want to remind you, I'm, I'm, I'm yes. that DJ. <laughs> so I like to get ready, but uh, <coughs> you ready? <laughs> this is the portion of the show. I'm reading the card that my man Chance gave me. We're about to flip it over. How many people in here speak Spanish? Oh, you gotta raise your hand so I can see somebody. Spanish. Raise your hand if you. If you so I'm gonna need a translator. Who? More than a swear. I'm sitting right next to y'all. Y'all ready? We're about to flip it over. Y'all ready? Yeah. Yo, give me some music, man. Yeah. 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 We're about to flip it up. You gotta bring it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Here we go. You don't know about the Latin party, huh? It's loud. It's loud. Coming to the stage <laughs> all the way from New York City, we have my man John Chance Acevedo. Pat Garcia, Joseph Son Hernandez. These brothers and sisters drove all the way from NYC. They are spoken word artists, shit talkers, educators. They drove from the Bronx just to be with us tonight. I want you to clap your hands. I want you to show some love. I want you to give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Give it up. Son and Chance, y'all. How's everybody doing? I guess this is a Latino portion of the show. Uh, Mike, Mike, yeah, boy. We're gonna have fun. We're we gonna take up about 20 minutes of your time talking shit. And, uh, That's it. Let's see what happens. October 25th, 2005, I walk into an elementary school and the kids look at me as if I'm their teacher. Five foot seven, two hundred and seven pounds with about twenty-seven tattoos. I tell the kids to please take out a clean sheet of paper and something to write with because I have an assignment for them to do. I need them to tell me what they inspire to be when they become older. Every kid in the classroom sucks their teeth at the same time. Oh man! <laughs> Not again! So I tell them, settle down, settle down, funky children. A little girl in the back of the room stands up and says, Mister. I know why you're making fun of us. The only reason you're making fun of us is you're, because you're preparing us for middle school. I say, yeah, whatever, just settle down. <laughs> Take out a clean sheet of paper and something to write with. I need you to tell me to, tell me what you aspire to be when you become older. Another kid from the back of the room stands up and says, Mister, I think we already did that assignment. I say, you did, but I lost the paper, so I need you to do it all over again. <laughs> For 15 minutes, every kid in the classroom puts their heads down and starts to write about what they inspire to be when they become older. I grab three kids at random and bring them into my office. The first kid, John C., a Dominican kid. And I say, John C., please tell me what you want to be when you become older. John C. looks at me and says, oh yeah, check it out, Mr. Jean. And I don't finish what you wanted me to do, but I can tell you what I want to be. I say, cool, please tell me what you aspire to be when you become old. He says, check it out. <laughs> when I become big, yo quiero jugar baseball. Woo! I say, John C., you're Dominican. Chances are you're going to play baseball anyway. He says, no, no, Mr. John C., I don't think you understand. See, I want to play pelota, and I don't care if it's in front of a lot of little people or a little bit of people. I say, John C., a lot of little people? He says, yes, Mr. John C., me and my father used to play pelota back in DR, but ever since I got my leg blown off, it's kind of hard for us to go outside and play catch. So I want to play pelota in front of a little bit of people or a lot of little people. So my father can sit in the stands and say, hey, that's my boy. It's an enemy meal, and I say, cool. But whatever you do, keep your head in these books and stay in school so no one plays you for a fool. And on top of that, nobody takes your money from you. He says, oh yeah, doctor. Which to me, 
That shit really don't mean anything in Dominican. <laughs> he walks out. Next guy that walks in, Jaffo, African kid. He always walks cool, calm, collected like a prince. Though his parents have always taught him to be. And I say, Jaffo, how are you? And he looks at me and he says, Good afternoon. Yeah. I say, Jaffo, please tell me what you aspire to be when you become old. He says, when I become old, I want to be a writer. I said, what kind of writer you want to be? He says, I want to write books. I said, what kind of books you want to write? He says, I want to write books to teach African-American parents how to treat African kids who come to America. Because <laughs> ever since I've been to America, it's kind of hard for me to be African. My mother tells me to be less African and be more American. I said, Ma, I don't know how to be less African and be more American because I don't know what being African is. Please explain to me the colors of my flag. Explain to me Ramadan. Explain to me why I'm the only kid in the fifth grade who can't wear the order and has to wear these natural oils. I said, Jaffo, you sound a little angry. Maybe all you need is anger management classes. He says, no, no, Mr. John, you see, I know that I can't change the world, but I know that if I can change the mind of a few people who can help me change the world, then I've done my job. And I say, cool. As he walks out the room and he says, good afternoon, the next child that walks in, Nevaeh. Mr. John. <laughs> My name is Nevaeh, heaven spelled backwards with a capital N, and please don't you get it twisted. <laughs> I said, Nevaeh, please tell me what you inspired to be when you become over. Nevaeh looks at me and says, um, I don't think I said I want to be another because I want to be another. What you want me to be another couple of okay? <laughs> I say, Nevaeh, you know, slow, you little sassy ass. <laughs> Because what I want to be may not be what you want me to be. And I say, okay, test me. And she looks at me. Mahogany brown complexion, oval shaped eyes, 10 years old in the fifth grade, and tells me that she wants to become a stripper. Oh. So, being the adult in the room, and because I can't discourage any of my kids from any of their dreams, <laughs> I asked her, Well, Nevaeh, what kind of stripper you want to be? <laughs> I slapped my turn to the boy because I can't believe I'm about to have a conversation with a 10 year old. What kind of stripper you about to be? So I'm like, okay, maybe you want to be the kind of stripper that takes off her clothes, slides down those poles, and gets touched by various men. She says, ew. She says, you know how many women slide down those poles? And I said, no, I don't. <laughs> I really don't. I said, well, maybe you want to be like, like them girls in the videos who get champagne all over their head. You know, like one of them? She's like, um, I don't know if you notice anything, right? But I'm black. You know how long it's going to take for my hair to get done after it's been wet? <laughs> I said, okay, bet. Maybe you want to be like, like Jermaine Dupri and Janet Jackson in the video. Where Jermaine Dupri takes out his black credit card, puts it into the water, screen goes up. Janet Jackson is dancing behind the screen. She doesn't take off her clothes. She doesn't slide down any clothes. She doesn't get touched by any men. And it seems like she makes some pretty good money. She says, hmm, this is a job. That sounds like a good idea. That's not myself in the forehead again because I can't believe I disagree with 10 year old. What kind of stripper they could possibly be? But I know there's more to the story. So I ask her again, Nevaeh, please tell me why you want to become a stripper. She says, Mr. John, I want to be a stripper because I can make more money in two business days than some of these business bitches can make in two weeks. Oh. I want to be able to help my mother and my grandmother put more food on the table. I want to help my siblings get to better schools. I ask her again, Nevaeh, please tell me why you want to become a stripper. She says, I'm tired of being the ugly girl in school. I want to be the cute girl in school. I want to walk down the hallways and there goes, there goes Nevaeh, the cute girl in school with the cute clothes in school, not the one who has to wear the hand-me-down clothes from the cousins that she's given to every day to school, the ones with the holes in it. I say, Nevaeh, please tell me why you want to become a stripper. She looks at me again, oh, she eyes. Ten years old in the fifth grade as a tear rolls down her cheek. And she says that the only reason she wants to become a stripper is because maybe, just maybe if she was a stripper, her father would come see her more often. Oh. To top it off, my love for you is prohibited by days left in original gold rush. A weight field of inhabited malpractice and indirect lines to verses of had it so loved to want to do so much more, but it wasn't good enough for an up and coming not so thick to cranium thinking. You see, longevity skips pages because fear moves in pavements when it search. 
For giving hope to only one chance to scream when streets knock you off your feet. My size four feet pleaded to head off in the film press to soak up this rush. In transit codes when hook noses want to rescue my scent to cross town and no turning back down to a Wizard of Oz place where we're just simply robots. Not lines or crows or a cute dog to take home. Home is not a home to false statements or questioning his rise to put bread in their mouths. Salutes to the red, white, and blue for making him poor. A poor misdirection to head west. Closed roads or conscience blocked from our actions and irrelevant opinions where a stop sign doesn't exist. Shoe strings from both ends can keep us intact. Matter of fact, I want to keep you closer, like sandpaper to plaster, a renowned, reinvented chapter to chapters. Let's redefine normal instead of getting away. So never say never, because I need you like this audience needs a lie. Toasting and opposed to the preeminent urban enemy, like a glove never slip up. Matter of fact, I want you to slide through. Varieties of crimes with hearts before the previous life never took a hike from distractions. We can make it work though nerves can be just a moment of splurge and typical of feeling lost. But I wait on turns, though it hurts to lose time, but I'm trying. But the sky is falling and I'm falling right along. Too often, too often questions become orphaned, motherless, and no father figures. I figure that somewhere, somewhere there's an answer looking down on us like a bar stool to a drunk man. You see the liver, liver's not quick enough to break down the amount of liquor that my mouth delivers. My mama, she says I'm a chip off the old block cause I'm 12 o'clock with my shots. In other words, I like my shit straight up, homeboy, no chases. Two quarter pints more than enough to knock me on my ass. Chance asks me how I know. Yo, son, how do you know? Because I drunk two quarter pints and it knocked me on my ass. <laughs> woke up the next day, head banging, hangover, still dressed in yesterday's clothes, with liquor stains on my jeans and blood on the seams. And now it seems that the more I ax down my family tree, the more liquor stains I find on my jeans. I guess you could say it's just the blood in my seams. You see, my grandpapa. He had a thing for vodka, and I could see him crystal clear like bottles of Belvedere sitting in his favorite chair, choking the neck on a bottle of Georgie. Old man, always good for a story. He used to say, the only thing that I love more than a stiff drink is a loose bitty with a fat ass and big titties. <laughs> and I say, Grandpa, me too. <laughs> I must have been in my eighth, maybe my ninth year of school. He sits me down and he pours me my first jewel. He says, look here, liquor over beer, have no fear. But beer before liquor make a man earn quicker. Boy, learn to be a listener before talking. And don't let folks price you and label you with colors like they do Johnny Walker. You can be a child of the sun, but sun, best respect the moonshine, young blood of mine. I can't tell you nothing about chasing pots of gold at the end of rainbows, but I can tell you how to get to the worm at the bottom of a bottom of queer <laughs> What I'm trying to say, Joe, is that there's always going to be snakes in the grass. You want the truth from a man's lips? You put some liquor in his ass. <laughs> your grandmama say I might go to hell if I keep talking like this, but this is the truth, so I'm going to tell you. I'm not saying I found a savior in a bottle of gin. I'm just saying that Tangeray has a way of untangling my transgressions to the point that now I hold communion with a cup full of cognac confessions. See, there's a few things I've learned in this lifetime. Grown men should never whine over spilled wine. The whole world wants to be rich. Nobody in their right mind wakes up and says, mm, today's just like the perfect day to be poor. <laughs> don't care how cute the Barton is, you don't take a drink unless you see them poor. Furthermore, you might think this is just the ramble of an alcoholic. I tell you, let's let time call it. Because if there's one thing I know for sure in this lifetime, 
is that too often our questions are becoming orphan, motherless, no father figures. I figure somewhere there has to be an answer looking down on me like a bar stool to a drunk man. <laughs> Anybody got children? Children. Yeah. My daughter looks better than all your children. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter is beautiful. Um, so I have three daughters, and um, whatever my wife is having next, I'm, I'm not sure she's expecting. Um, so, so thank you. Um, come and help take care of some of these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Dear daughter, <laughs> Dear daughters, I wish I knew how beautiful you were, Muñeca. Please don't let these five dollar people with twenty dollar words fool you. You are no fish, so please don't fall for no hooks and no lines when they tell you that Hurt when you fell from heaven, you tell them stupid. Angels don't fall from heaven. They descend gracefully. <laughs> when they tell you that you're the most beautifulest girl in the world, you tell them, thank you. And then you tell them, man or woman, depending on which way you're going when you're older, <laughs> you must be well-traveled since you've been all over the world and pick me to be the most beautiful. <laughs> Remind them and say thank you. Don't be stank. Yes, stank. Stink is something totally different. When they tell you that you are pretty, remind them that you are smart too. When these people try to buy you pretty things that bling, tell them thank you, but you want for nothing. You have a daddy who takes care of you and many uncles who just got out of jail <laughs> and have no problem revisiting some correctional facilities. <laughs> Please don't run to these people with open arms and closed hearts and a mouthpiece full of slick talk. Yes, daughter, what I'm trying to teach you is Please do not date a poet <laughs> or a rapper because they lie. Okay, not all of us lie, but most of us do stretch the truth. And when somebody tries to be a real smooth with you and say, hey, baby girl, let me rearrange the alphabet and put you and I together, you tell them, excuse me. And you stare at them in their face like they're stupid. And you say, that sounds German. <laughs> I don't do German. <laughs> so far from having daughters, it feels a little hard to be a woman. I feel it's hard to be a woman too. <laughs> This piece that I read was just an experience that I went through just watching my sister and my brother-in-law just, just get at it at each other. How can you love everything that his eye sees when beauty becomes victim of an obvious emotional rape episode? I'm missing a part where he tells you to never hesitate to run into his arms. What affects you affects me. And you have me here questioning him. Why are you scared to put the time in? She needs no time in love. To love you was supposed to be divine and happily ever something more than a lasting crash course. To your last resort of just the need to be alone. I got issues when paper hearts give paper cuts. Reopening wounds, displaying in chop shop, <clears throat> making me wonder, what the fuck is up with love is love? 
How can you be so emotionally numb? His creation is to build scars. You're denied to check off and make up for what you thought was wrong. He dismissed and unsuccessfully lost the turn, so he lost it all. Couldn't keep a percentage of history worth in centuries to keep him in love. You can't do anything to keep him from falling. I hope in these falls you forget how his voice sounds. I hope you forget effects that leads to your active and influenced outcome of illusions. You can't make that back and unravel attached pre-packed to fill empty spots. Tell him why we don't ever mean to take our loved ones for granted. Tell him that your runaway love should be granted to mounts of thoughts together assembled. Tell him you're one of them and he's everything under the sun and where shadows exposed to misery and shattered romantic dreams to blind new things to all life forms in two. What if my truth says your truth can't be true? What if any truth was long gone describing a lost love? How can any pair become a format of love phases to a capital program of male and love? Once upon a time, his teachings were preserved in the past, a journey to find prints of no disturbance to make it last, but it didn't last. Thank you. <laughs> Let's picture lights dim. Fear thrown to the floor like decorative pillows. Inhibitions are pulled back like bed sheets. As clothes. Flesh exposed. Thresholds explored under burning wicks. Our shadows dance on a wall like a candle's red orange flame. We baptize each other in waxy waters. Because of her, I know the pleasure of pain. I see beauty in third degree burns. She can spin passion in the palms of her hands. Holds lust in the valleys in between her fingers. She digs her fingernails across my skin. The skeletons of past lovers buried underneath her manicure scatter bone across my back like a disrupted graveyard. Shit, because of her, I no longer fear death. I believe in resurrections. I wear her legs proudly. Faithfully around my neck like a crucifix <laughs> Like the silk scarf that we use to dim the lights of this bedroom With my hands on her hips My tongue glides across her lips the way an eagle claw skims water I can hear the cry of a woman being buried alive in between her thighs And I refuse to let her die so I use my tongue to dig Like I'm trying to taste her rib, you dig? <laughs> hip, hip, or lick lock <laughs> <laughs> Hip or lip locked, we lose track of tick tocks. Measure our time spent by how many times the damn CD plays over. One hand full of hair, the other pulling back on her shoulder to clap. A flesh on flesh snap like a snare drum waistline grind deep like a bass line. But this shit here. This shit here is beyond sex, beyond fucking, beyond making love. This shit here, baby girl, is more like music. Her tongue is rhythmic, her kiss is rhyme, her body is a silent song, and I don't mind licking the lyrics off her lips or the verses off her curves. Shit, because of her, I write poems like this in body language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that shit right there, I like that. I was God's best. The last breath concerning the woman and I. Now I kneel just to let you touch me. Praying in my mind that the seconds turn to an end. Turn it. Sorry. 
Turn to an imagination of lies. Pretending to nurture myself, but it's clear that I have hidden gems and rather expose my toy chest than safe sex for the value of a combo leading to respect. Look to me, kiss me desperately. I know nothing else but to guarantee that when we finish, I'm golden to tricks and treats of love. Art is the power to express a new way of seeing the world. To change the world, to change the world, to change the world is the power is the power of art. Are your kids getting enough art? Whether through poetry, dance music or drama, the arts open the doors to creativity. As a mother and teacher, I know that arts education can help our children develop confidence and a better understanding of the world around them. Even if you have just 30 minutes a week, get your kids more involved in the arts. And think about the kind of world we can leave behind for our children and our children's children. Art. Ask for more. AmericansforTheArts.org Are your kids getting enough art? Where's the music? I don't hear any. Arts programs are being cut, making it hard for my kids and yours. Arts education is important, so it goes. Fight for it, because the less arts kids get, the more it shows. Math and pain are creating music. Arts education is key. How's that, Mom? Remember what I told you, Chuck. Less bebop and more hip-hop. Art. Right. Ask for more. Americansforthearts.org.